Snapstruck. Thanks to Sean for requesting this one. He astutely pointed out that the most viewed video on this channel is best Sega Genesis games that SNES owners missed out on, which is uh, kind of weird considering this channel is mostly, you know, Super Nintendo stuff. Anyway, he wanted to see a part two of that video, so thanks for the request. I thought I'd narrow down the focus for this one a little bit for Genesis exclusives that aren't all that well known, but there are a couple well-known games that I have to start out with that I simply flat out forgot to mention in the first video. Games like Herzog's Vi, one of the best 16-bit games ever made, period. This game combines shoot 'em up and top-down run-and-gun gameplay with a real-time strategy game structure. You control an airship to fly around the battlefield, but you can transform into a mech and fight stuff on the ground. In the meantime, you order combat units, command them to attack the enemy base wherever that may be, and all sorts of other stuff. This game is way, way ahead of its time, seamlessly blending action and real-time strategy, and it has a two-player versus mode, which is pretty cool. This is up there with Gunstar Heroes, Fantasy Star 4, and the Sonic games as one of the best Genesis games ever. I also have to mention the Road Rash series, particularly Road Rash 3, although all three Genesis games are pretty good. The third game, however, has better and more interesting weapons to beat the crap out of these other racers with. The biker sprite animations may not be the greatest, but it's still so satisfying to clobber other racers or to watch them get blindsided by oncoming cars. Like I said, you can't really go wrong with any of the Road Rash Genesis games, but I had the most fun with the third one. Not a lot of nuance or strategy here, which, funny enough, makes it almost the opposite of a game like Herzog's Vi, but if you just need to unwind and kick the bejesus out of people while racing on motorcycles, then you can't beat Road Rash on Genesis. Let's get back to what the Genesis does best. For example, a game like Ranger X. I mean, just take one glance at this game. Look at this friggin' insanity! This isn't quite your typical run-and-gun action platformer, though. Ranger X controls like a cross between a game like Metal Warriors and Defender, meaning the A button fires your weapon to the left and the C button fires to the right. In the meantime, flipping between special weapons with the middle B button. It takes a bit to get used to, but once you do, this game is a ridiculous amount of fun, with flamethrowers, bombs, and really cool-looking full-screen clear-all attacks. Ranger X is a great example of what the Genesis could do really well and to make it stand out from the Super Nintendo. Now of course the Super Nintendo did have some pretty good running gun games like Cybernator, otherwise known as Assault Suits Vulcan, but the Genesis got their own game in the Assault Suits series a couple years earlier titled Target Earth in North America and Assault Suits Lanos in Japan. And if you liked Cybernator, you would really enjoy Target Earth. It's got similar gameplay and controls, a ton of weapons to choose from, and the mission structure here also keeps things interesting. Like in the first level here, it's not just run to the right and beat the boss, you have to beat the boss before it destroys one of your bases. Target Earth isn't perfect. The control Controls can be a bit clunky and seem unresponsive at times, but it's still worth playing if you haven't. Let's keep going on the run and gun front with Dinosaurs for Hire. Yes, that's right, Dinosaurs for Hire. You play as a friggin' dinosaur with a machine gun and a Contra style game that allows for two player co op. What's not to love here? Sure, this isn't nearly as good as something like Contra 3 or Contra Hardcore, and there's zero nuance here, but there doesn't need to be any nuance. Sometimes it's just fun to play as a Stegosaurus, a Triceratops, or a T Rex with a machine gun and just blow up anything that moves. Alright, next let's check out Red Zone, a top-down helicopter shooter where you use your radar in the upper right corner to hunt down enemies, occasionally switching to levels where you gun down enemies on foot. What really makes Red Zone stand out in the Genesis library are the real-time zooming and rotation effects that makes this look and feel like kind of a combat pilot wings. The controls take a long time to get good at, unfortunately, and the difficulty here is brutal. You get one life and it's game over. But still, Red Zone is a great demonstration of what was technically possible on the Sega Genesis. I'll say this much, if you like the final bonus level of Pilot Wings, you'd really enjoy Red Zone. From the creators of Xenophobe and Rampage comes General Chaos, a one-on-one -on -one war strategy game that takes place from an isometric kind of viewpoint in settings ranging from deserts, forests, and city blocks. You can pick from four different squads that each consist of skill sets like grenade tossers, a flamethrower guy, a machine gun guy, and so on. You just control where your troops run to and where they shoot. It's pretty straightforward for a strategy game. And when two opposing troops get close enough, they duke it out in a fist fight that plays like a fight in a hockey game. This is a fun game with a great sense of humor and a lot of personality. Next we have Cheeky Cheeky Boys, and I'm cheating a bit here because this game is an arcade port that also showed up on a couple other consoles like the PC Engine CD, but this is a bright and cheerful looking platformer that looks like the kind of stuff you'd see on the SNES, something like Super Adventure Island 2 for instance. To be honest, there's nothing all that unique here, this is just the case of a well-made game that could use a little more attention. All the fundamentals are executed well here throughout the game's nine levels, and the level design keeps things interesting as well. It can't be overstated how nice this game looks though, and there's all sorts of 
locations represented here like traversing the clouds, cutting through the jungle, or exploring a sunken pirate ship. Finally, we'll finish off here with two Genesis games that never left Japan. Here we have another game developed by Treasure, the same folks that made games like Alien Soldier and Gunstar Heroes. This is Panorama Cotton, and as you can see, this is a 3D rail shooter in the same vein as something like Space Harrier. And yeah, this game looks freaking spectacular. There's some occasional slowdown here and there, but this still is a great entry in the Cotton series. The Super Famicom also had a Cotton game titled Cotton 100%, but that was just kind of a run-of-the-mill side-scrolling shooter. The Mega Drive, meanwhile, had this, and this is another game where I just can't help but say, look at this freaking game. And really, you can't argue with the pick up and play rail shooter. Definitely try and play Panorama Cotton any way you can. Another Japan-only release for the Mega Drive was the sixth entry in the Wonder Boy series titled Monster World 4. Yeah, I know that's kind of confusing. This is an adventure-style side-scrolling platformer featuring long, elaborate dungeons, tons of boss fights, and a visual style reminiscent of something out of the Shantae series. This is a great blend of adventure-style mechanics and platforming. The dungeons can kind of drag at times because they're so long, and Lydia, I might add, not much exploration here. But Monster World 4 still has a lot going for it with the atmosphere, music, and visual presentation, not to mention the number of boss fights, which are a lot of fun. Monster World 4 received an English translation on the Wii Virtual Console, PlayStation Network, and Xbox Live, so check it out there if you can. Anyway, that's all for now. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.